How many technologically advanced civilizations exist in the universe? The Drake Equation If the universe is teeming with aliens, where are they all? It is said that the Italian physicist Enrico Fermi asked himself this question in the context of a conversation on the evaluation of the probability of coming into contact with intelligent extraterrestrial life forms. Apparently, you can only give an answer by working your imagination and setting out to make excellent science fiction. But in the course of the video, we will see that this question is not so far-fetched. There was someone who tried to give a quantitative answer instead, strenuously trying to stay within the context of pure scientific speculation. He did it by elaborating an equation that, once solved, would allow us to have a reliable estimate of how many other civilizations share with us this strange condominium that could be our galaxy. This someone is astronomer Frank Drake, one of the pioneers in the radio search for extraterrestrial intelligence. He devised a famous formula known as the Drake Equation, which should help us estimate the number of technological civilizations potentially existing in our galaxy. The equation was presented for the first time in a conference at Green Bank in November 1961. The initiative was intended to trigger a fruitful discussion on the real prospects of a search for non-terrestrial intelligence by radio means. The formula that Drake presented aimed to highlight with a mathematical relationship the specific factor that play an important role in the birth and development of intelligent civilizations in the universe. As it will be seen, each term of the equation represents a key element in the evolution of a civilization, and the resulting numbers have a purely theoretical value. It should not be forgotten that any evaluation can be made in such a context as an exclusively probabilistic appearance. Given that most of the values can be assigned to the various parameters are devoid of experimental relevance and therefore only theoretical. Although a univocal solution to this equation is not currently conceivable, it is of undoubted scientific interest, since it illustrates the potential of this type of investigation very well. Drake's hypothesis starts from the consideration that the number of advanced civilizations that may exist in our galaxy, possessing the interest and the ability to communicate over interstellar distances, can be reasonably estimated using the following equation. N is the number of intelligent civilizations presumably present in our galaxy capable of making contact with each other. We must pay attention to the fact that here we are talking about civilization and not about life in the most general sense of the term. The reason for such a distinction made by Drake probably lies in the current technological impossibility to go and see for oneself if there are forms of life elsewhere. So the hope of discovering if, for example, a civilization exists on Vega or not is entirely placed on the possibility of receiving a phone call from there a message organized in such a way as to tell us in an unambiguous way that life hasn't only taken its root there, but which has also reached a degree of cultural evolution such as to allow it to communicate its presence. And star represents the number of stars in our galaxy, estimated at the order of 200 billion stars more or less similar to our sun. That is a huge number, and this enormity is the main reason why even the hope of not being alone is among the last to die. The most optimists pose n equals n star, that is, they hypothesize that forms of intelligent life have developed around all the stars. But at the present state of our knowledge, it is an impossible position to defend on the basis of a good physical and historical political sense. In an alternative writing of Drake's equation, instead of n star, r appears, which is the average annual rate of star formation during the entire life of the Milky Way. R is obtained by dividing the number of galactic stars by the age of the galaxy. It represents the only parameter on which it is possible to hazard estimates, because it is calculated from the number of existing stars and the number of years of life of the Milky Way. Currently, its value is assumed to be 20. Fp represents the fraction of stars with a planetary system. This term is subject to continuous revisions by astronomers who, thanks to the considerable boost given by new technologies, in recent years are finding more and more unequivocal evidence of the presence of planets around many of the stars examined. Thanks to missions such as the satellites Kepler, Gaia, TESS, and other similar missions. 
However, double stars that are at least 50% have a hard time supporting planetary systems due to celestial mechanic problems and reciprocal perturbations. But we can also be optimistic because then other factors will rule out double or multiple systems. Fp could be assumed equal to 0.5, i.e. half of the stars have a planetary system. Ne represents the part of the fraction of these planets that have conditions similar to ours. The subscript E stands for Earth, therefore potentially suitable for the development of life, a distance from their star that can provide a quantity of heat and light neither scarce nor too intense, i.e. that places it in what is usually referred to as habitable zone, in an area of the planetary system where the tidal effects of the other planets are negligible. A planet in which there is the presence of the essential elements for the birth of life and with such gravity as to be able to retain an atmosphere. An atmosphere that is able to induce a greenhouse effect so as to protect the soil from harmful ultraviolet radiation. The estimation of Ne is more complicated and it will be Kepler, Tess, Gaia and the other similar space missions to help us. So far we have discovered a prevalence of giant, often gaseous planets very close to the central stars. Several rocky planets have also been discovered, but with greater difficulty than the first due to their smaller size. Ne then depends a lot on the type of star. The small and cold ones have a very narrow and close habitable zone and therefore the useful planets should huddle close to them. But in this case the tidal force would block them like the moon with the earth and they would be destined to always show the same face to the central star with obvious dramatic consequences. Giant stars give more space but live much less and so on. Each star has its own problems of urbanization. A decent estimate for this parameter could be one, i.e. one habitable planet for each star with planetary system. Fv is the fraction of suitable planets in which life actually develops and evolves towards very complex forms. This variable takes into account how many of these life-forming planets were actually able to do so. Life as, and perhaps more than any other event within our universe, is a complex phenomenon, subject to many, too many variables, and the physical, chemical, and biological path that leads to its development can be diverted or interrupted by a whole series of factors, some currently known and many others unknown. Among the former, we cannot but think, for example, of the fall to the ground of one or more asteroids the size of the one that here on Earth is supposed to have abruptly interrupted the existence of dinosaurs. A fairly sensible estimate could lead to a value of 0.2, i.e. one planet out of five would allow life to evolve. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell, you will help us to make products of ever higher quality. Fi represents the fraction of these planets on which intelligent life forms develop. This term must take into account how many, among all those lucky planets that have developed life, have been able to guard it and allow it to evolve as intelligent life. What actually makes life evolve up to intelligence? It certainly takes time, fairly constant climactic conditions, few external disasters, falling asteroids, exploding supernovae, etc. Fc is the fraction of planets where intelligent life forms develop interest in interstellar communications. His estimate is also quite complicated. A very dense belt of asteroids that would prohibit space travel or orbital telescopes, either a much denser cloud cover or even cosmic modesty, intolerance towards others, agoraphobia or simply a civil evolutionary stage but not technologically adequate for interstellar communication could all be elements that make the value of this fraction increase or decrease. D is the average duration in years of a technologically advanced civilization. It tells us that civilizations are born, grow, reach a cultural apogee and economic prosperity, but it also says that sooner or later they suffer the catastrophe of often self-destructive decline. If an alien civilization were willing to communicate with other civilizations scattered throughout the cosmos, but in its evolutionary hysteria, the nightmare of a total war was opposed to destroy the entire race or to leave a few survivors unable for various reasons to resume a discourse oriented towards cosmic communication, we would never know of its existence. It should be noted that the most delicate aspect of the calculation consists precisely in the evident difficulty of assigning reasonably approximate values to the parameters, as there is no experimental evidence that allows a sufficiently precise assessment of their value to be made. 
Everyone can advance personal hypotheses and practice calculating the value of n by inserting more or less reliable data on the basis of the results deriving from the most recent discoveries in astronomy and exobiology. One can be fundamentally pessimistic or optimistic. The remarkable fact is that, in many cases, the estimate leads to a probability of the existence of intelligent life within our galaxy very close to one. In recent years, following important astronomical discoveries, it has been gradually possible to assign more and more precise values to some variables. However, at least three of the parameters of the Drake equation remain entirely theoretical. According to some scholars, however, it is possible to give a fairly precise estimate of the value of the individual terms of the Drake equation, an assessment that seems to lead some to the conclusion that life exists elsewhere, convincing many others instead of its absence. The beauty of this equation is ultimately its most obvious flaw, that its apparently rigorous scientificity attracts many serious scholars who are able to make extremely varied and often strongly conflicting numerical evaluations on the possible value of its result. The orbital data and the mass of exoplanets discovered so far are constantly increasing, and this data is closely linked to the availability of new and more sophisticated instrumental technologies, which in the near future would allow us to directly reveal the existence of terrestrial-type planets. However, the scientific community is quite in agreement in considering the common existence of terrestrial-type planets orbiting around solar-class stars, spectral class G2V of the Hertz-Sprung-Russell diagram. With similar arguments, it is reasonable to hypothesize that the stars of the main sequence of a spectral class approximately similar to the Sun have a similar distribution of planets, with orbits stable enough to allow the existence of liquid water indispensable for the origin and development of life. Drake's equation tells us that we will find civilization only where conditions are the same or slightly different from those we find here on Earth. The claim to scientificity of this equation and the theory that supports it could then seem to waver if one looked at it as a multiplication of unknowns, but one would make the mistake of not considering the great correctness of the method adopted to conduct the search for the value of its single terms. It is precisely to protect this correctness of the scientific method that it has been chosen to restrict the field of action of this research to what we know for certain about life and its requests from our direct experience as living beings. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality.